In this project, we are going to do our particle effects. We're going to steal some basic particle effects from our learn projects, apply them to our ship, and have it where when we thrust, we get an actual particle effect in the correct location. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Now, in the last video, we imported our particle effect into Unreal Engine, but we kind of forgot to do it for Unity because, well, I kind of forgot to do it. So let's go ahead and start up Unity again. We'll recreate the Learn project. We'll go ahead and jump in there, and we'll steal the particle effect. And this definitely was not what I was planning on having happen. Okay, what the hell? Okay. That was extremely weird, but okay. Uh, let's let's go back to our Learn tab and have that working. Start up our Learn project. Get everything in. <laughs> okay, now that we're in our project, let's go ahead and grab our effects so vfx engines what do we have here we have engines enemy engines player what does our engine player look like there's a i think this is the one we want right yeah that's the one we want okay so i'm gonna grab the engines player same thing as before uh, export package it's gonna export everything out i'm gonna boop drop it inside of there Le oh i gotta name it something um particle why not and there we go. Now we have a particle effect we can pull in. Drop out of here. Pull it in here. Going to go and import our package again. Particle. Let it pull in. Uh, do, 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 do. Half this stuff we don't really need, but we're going to go ahead and delete it. That's what's nice about this. Um, I don't like the outside effect of this material. I only like the inside of effect of the material. This little inner glowy part. So we're going to do that. And then here's our VFX for our engines, because this is what we're going to steal. One right here. If I can have it back, please. There we go. And then we have the inside and the outside. So if we were to take and grab this, we'll put it right here. We'll hit play. We'll go ahead and look at this a little bit more. Okay. We only want the inside effect. So we want, let's see. Which one was that? It's the flare, right? We only want the core part. Can I have my engine? Yeah, there we go. So we don't want our flare part. There we go. So now there's our effect that we're going to have, our little core effect. And we'll apply that in the right spot. So we're good there. Let's go ahead and rebuild that effect. And there's our engine for our player. So there is our engine VFX. Now we need to actually put it on our player. And this is where game objects come in handy. So we're going to go ahead and create three empty game objects that are simply going to hold our thrusters and they're supposed to be on the player so let's see this is the bottom thruster let's go ahead and set this one up first so two, two engines i guess technically i could have just done this huh that probably would have been smarter and we only need what do we need we only need the jet core okay you know what this is you know it'd probably be smarter there we go there we go because we only care about the particle system itself Right here. Yeah, this is the only thing we care about right here. And then um, I already know we're not going to want to play on awake. I'm going to test it for position purposes. Um, but I know we're not going to need that. So let's reset this. Can I have... There we go. Why do we have... Why do we have a phantom? Oh, because I have the other thruster right there. That's helpful. So there we go. Do, do, do. Let's pull this down. Here's our bottom thruster right here hit play oh my god it's so tiny okay we already know that's in the wrong spot so our thruster is going to be at the top part probably so do, do, do. Let's play here we go what are we thinking something like that'll probably be okay yeah okay so that'll be okay we'll go ahead and stop that We'll go ahead and duplicate this and we'll turn this to the left thruster. 
We'll move it over here. And we'll rotate it, and we're going to run into our first problem. We're going to want this negative 45 degrees. Okay. So our problem is, let's move that back, is our thruster particle effect is designed to only go in one direction, if you notice that. So if we were to look at it right here, we will notice that we have a start rotation. Now the start rotation determines basically the rotation of the thruster when it starts. So if we were to adjust this, you'll notice that we can adjust it. But the problem is it kind of can't be adjusted um, on a per particle instance on, on on this one right here. We can't just say, hey, this item, turn it. We can't turn it because you know it's part of this right here. And the particle saying, hey, fire off in one direction. If we were to take the rotation here, for example, and rotate it, you'll notice it does nothing. We'll do this one. Yeah, see? The rotation of the actual transform means nothing in terms of the particle because the particle has its own effects and its own setting. So, again, not a big deal. What we want to do is probably take and do, 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 do. let's turn these into prefabs. We're going to take the bottom thruster drop it in here and now it's its own prefab setting we're going to take the left thruster and we're going to drop it into here like that and we're going to take the left thruster and adjust it to something like 45 hey look at that that looks like something we want we'll move it i don't know what i guess we could do what do we think something like that okay something like that we'll duplicate the left thruster we'll change this to the right thruster and we'll go ahead and drop it into prefab. So there we go. Now we have a right thruster. And of course, I'm. Uh, did I, I did duplicate, right? Yeah, okay. There's a the left thruster. And we'll change this one to, oh, I don't know, negative 45 maybe? It seems like it makes sense. There we go. Now, if we just select all of our thrusters, there we go. So that's what our thrusters will look like on our ship. Which, hey, I think it's good enough. One thing I did mention them before, though, we're not going to want them to play on awake, so we're going to shut that off, and we'll go ahead and pause this and stop that. And now we have our three thruster setups. Now, whenever we want, we could start these thrusters, and it's going to go ahead and fire them off, and we'll get a thruster effect. So now we need to make them work. We have a script already in our player, so if we find it, and this controls our stuff. So let's go ahead and open that up, and let's set up some public variables. So... Because these thrusters are technically not on the same place as the script, I mean, with Unreal Engine, you have blueprints, and everything inside that blueprint is accessible, like you'll see shortly. These are technically as part of a different game. They, aren't, there are, they are their own game objects, to be honest. Uh, we need a way to access them. So we're going to go ahead and set up a way to access them. And it's not much more difficult. We just add some public variables, and then what do you know? We're good to go. So we'll make some public variables. Let's see, bottom thruster, uh, left thruster. And yes, before before people complain, feel free to about the camel case or the Pascal case naming on the stuff. Um, everyone does it differently. It's just my personal preference to do stuff like this. It should probably be camel case with the lower case, but honestly, I just... I'll change it later. I, I do whatever feels like I'm doing. You'll notice in this one I have Camel and Pascal. And honestly, once you're in the inspector, it Camel, it Pascal cases everything, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so we have our left, right, and bottom thruster. Let's not screw up this time. Let's remember to actually assign them like we forgot last time. So we'll wait for this to compile. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll assume we saved this. We did save it, okay. So we'll wait for, oh, that's, that's the Unreal Engine one. Wait, where did my mouse go? Oh, I still have the plane, that's funny. There we go. So our player script should finish compiling. Uh, should finish compiling? Why are we not compiling here? Oh, because uh, I'm an idiot. So if we were paying attention to the thingy, particle is the individual thing. Particle system is what I'm actually doing here. Oh, I forgot about that. Yep. Just in different naming conventions. We'll let it compile. The error should go away. And we should get our particle systems. There we go. Now we have particle systems. And we want our bottom thruster assigned to the bottom thruster. And our left thruster. Left thruster. Right thruster. Right thruster. We'll go ahead and apply. 
let our defaults change. Now we have three thrusters that we can activate. We need to figure out exactly when we want these thrusters to play. So whenever we are getting input, we want to check and see if the thrusters are playing and do certain things. And then whenever we're getting input, we want to actually fire off the thrusters if they're not. So let's see if we can figure out the smarter way to do this. We're already doing a vertical here. So let's try something like this. If bottom thruster is plane, so if it's not plane, then we're going to go ahead and do bottom thruster dot play. I don't know. It sounds like it'll work for me, right? Okay. We always check stuff to make sure it works. We'll hit play. Uh, doo -doo -doo. We will move this up. And we'll push up. And there we go. Now we have a couple things where, for whatever reason, the thruster is totally staying down there. It's not what we planned. So we definitely need to fix that. Why is our thruster staying inside of the same place. That is kind of weird, isn't it? Let's see, bottom thruster, looping. We don't want pre-warm, actually. We have it set to the rotation, which we technically don't need for a bottom thruster, so that's not it. Um, but why do we have the thing not following? Hmm. That's interesting. Huh, I don't know. Why is it? Why is it playing in the editor, darn it? Okay, let's try this again. Huh. I gotta admit, that's pretty interesting. The particle system should not be doing that. So let me figure this one out. Why is our particle... What the hell? Uh, microphone clear, microphone clear, microphone clear, microphone clear. So if you notice, we have a weird issue here where we have things not moving. Well, our problem is our physics are attached to our rigid body. Our rigid body is attached to our ship mesh. Which means we're not actually moving the player game object. We're moving just the ship mesh. So that's probably not what we wanted to do. So let's go ahead and paste this back over here. Let's go ahead and put our rigid body back to here. So it's on the actual player object itself. And get rid of it from here. And then now when we play our example. Now everything should work properly. And there we go. Because now we're actually moving the game object itself, the parent, rather than just the mesh inside of the parent. So, remember I mentioned earlier, it probably couldn't hurt to move the rigid body back onto the mesh itself instead of the player? Yeah, nope. It did hurt, and it just bit us in the butt. But, as you notice, we have a thruster. And our thruster is working with our ship like we expected. Granted, it's not working perfectly. When I let go of the button, it doesn't stop. So we need to kind of take that into effect. So let's see, if we have vertical access, we're going to do that. Now, if we do we want to make it where it's an else, or how do we want to make this stop, basically? I think it may be an else, because with the vertical, it's a one thing or the other. If we have input on the vertical, therefore we want the thruster to work. If we don't have input, we want the thruster to stop. So we'll do an else, and hopefully you can figure this one out, bottom thruster dot stop. Okay. Now, there is a kind of an issue here, and that we probably don't want to do this. Basically, every fixed update is going to stop the thruster. 
So we don't want to do that. So we want to do else if bottom thruster is playing. So we only want to stop it if it's already playing. Go back in. Do, 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 hit play. And if we did it right, fingers crossed. There we go. Thruster up, thruster off, thruster up, thruster off, thruster up, thruster off. Now the thruster itself has a end period basically when it dies because it doesn't immediately stop. Uh, which I like. I don't have a problem with. Basically, when you let off the throttle, it gives you that little bit of extra movement. But that is something to keep in mind. And it's actually going to come up in a later video where when you deactivate a particle system or you stop a particle system, it doesn't necessarily mean it's done playing. But for now, we have something working. So let's go ahead and switch this over to our side ones. We need to figure out which one is the correct side ones, though. So how do we do that? Um, hopefully we can figure it out based on if it is the positive or negative. So we should be able to do that, right? So let's see. Get access. Check and see if it's not playing. Now, do we want both thrusters to fire? My thought is no. We only want one thruster to fire, either left or the right. So we're going to do an else on this one. So if the left thruster is playing, and go back to not. So if the left thruster is not playing, and we'll copy paste because it's so much easier, horizontal. So let's see, left should be negative. So less than. Uh, oh, and we also have an issue here that I noticed no one else noticed because I didn't say that. This should be a negative, not a positive, because this is kind of an issue right here, because the um, less than it should be a negative one. So there we go. Less than negative one. And then we'll do left thruster play. They kind of bit me in the butt earlier. I keep forgetting about that. Because we want to make sure it's, you know, greater than zero. So it's one. Or less than negative one. And hence negative one. Go ahead and play this one again. It may seem silly to continue to go back and forth. We know code probably works. But that's the way I like to do it. So there we go. Now... When I push to the left, that's when my left thruster fired. Technically, I want the left thruster to fire when I push to the right. So we actually want to change some things. So we can either have the right thruster fire in this case, or we can switch this value right here, which is the this one. So I think I'm just going to do this. Greater than 0 0.01. There we go. So we'll copy this, and then we'll do else, and we'll paste. We'll change some code up, right? thruster so if the right thruster is not playing and this is less than negative 0.01 then we want the right thruster to play okay now I should be able to and we'll 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 put in the other code right now to stop that so we know that's working so we need to make sure that we stop the particles at this point so to do, do this is our if checks so this will play if we want it to play and then we'll do our um, checks to stop them so we already know it's basically this code right here um, technically we can have one thruster stop and one thruster start on the same frame so we need to keep that in mind so that's why we don't want this as a big else if so if the left thruster is playing and uh how do we want to do this do we want to check it against the input or would we want to check it against if the other one is playing? No, because we are going to have a delay. Remember, we can't do that. So if the left thruster is playing and the horizontal axis, this should probably be negative. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to start randomly pushing numbers and see what happens. That's what's nice. We can test. Uh, left thruster, stop. So this is basically saying if the left thruster is playing, but we're pushing the other direction, then we're going to go and stop the left thruster. Um, and then probably do an else. Ah, oh, well, just copy paste. Uh, do, 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 do. So right thruster is playing. Well, I should rephrase. This is what I think is going to happen. We don't actually know because I haven't tested it. I mean, in theory, I've tested it somewhere else. But since I'm not checking that, I think I'm going off memory. Let's find out. Up, off, up, off, good, right, didn't shut off, oh, 
There we go. So right. Okay, so right did shut off, but not when I let go of the button. So left and right are working properly, but they're not shutting off when I let go of the button. So we need to think about that one. Okay, so how do we do that? So where is my code? Okay, so my code is if the left thruster is plane and get input horizontal is less than. So I think these are backwards is what it is. Less than 0.01F and greater than negative. Yeah. There we go. And where's my game? Doo -doo -doo. Try this again. Oh, no. Okay, obviously I'm not smart enough to figure out how to do this. So I'm going to refer to my code that I wrote somewhere else because, uh, oh, I know why. I'm outside the, oh, okay, because I'm only doing this in the get access portion right here, which means these will never trigger if we have no input. These should be out of here because this is only going to check if we have access. We want these to stop if there's nothing being played. So I bet you that's what will fix it. I don't know. Let's find out. And go in here. Let's see. Right. Stop. Right. Stop. Up. Stop. Left. Stop. There we go. Look at that. When you actually do the code properly... And you'll notice I can only do two at a time. I can go up and left, up and right. I, left and right doesn't work. You can only do one or the other. Okay, cool. So there is our particle effect. And it looks like it's working and it's looking like it's stopping. So I think our particle effect inside of Unity is done. So if we look at the code, let's translate this over to Unreal Engine as easy as possible. So the easiest way we're going to do that is, let's see. So we're going to check and see if it's thrusting. If not, we stop. We play it. If there's input. And then we do the same thing. Now, one thing that's going to be a little bit in different in um, uh, da, 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 da. Unreal Engine is we're going to use an on-off effect inside of Unreal Engine rather than just checking for stuff like this every single frame. Eh, do we need to? Let's see. How does this work? Fixed update. Yeah, because this is... Okay, so... Here's one of the big differences between Unreal Engine and Unity, if you'll notice with the input. Unity takes its input during an update event, and then it pulls the information, and then you do something with it. When we switch over to Unreal Engine, with the way we have our input, so let's find our framework for the input, we have a polling event, which is our input axis right here, but we also have our straight press and release. But you'll notice that neither one of these are actually during... Uh, let's spell it properly. The, oh, oh, friggin' tick, not update. The tick, or the update event. We're not actually harnessing the tick event inside of Unreal Engine. Therefore, we can't just, like, check every frame. Oh, should it be on or off? We are harnessing these ones right here. Um, technically, these, get, you know, you're not screw it. We don't, let's see. We needed these, what did we need these for? On and off. Should we... You know what? I'm going to deviate from the other way I did it. Let's see how closely we can get this to match Unity. In the my example project that I was going off of, I did this using the toggle events, but let's see if we can mimic. So we know in Unity, when we have our events for the polling, we are doing something. And then in this case, we're adding our force. I'm going to move this down a little bit. So let's see if we can do the same thing with our particle effects. So... This is kind of, let's see, we have our player. We need to be able to turn on and off our particles from our player ship. So let's go to our player and, well, shoot, we need particles. I guess we should probably add those. I guess I'm a little bit behind here. Um, where is our particle? So under effects, it's our particle engine, and it's right there. So let's go back to our player. Let's add a particle. And this is going to add a particle system. And since we already had that particle selected, you'll notice it automatically added it. So that's kind of handy. We'll look at this and oops, stop it. And yeah, that works. What it, should we move it down more? I like it. I like where it's at. You know what? That's good enough. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate these twice. So we're going to go with the bottom thruster. And uh, we're going to try to do left thruster. And then we're going to go with the right thruster. I 
like that. Okay, so left thruster is going to be over here. Let's rotate it. And 90 degrees, bam, we have a left thruster. And we didn't even have to change the um, stuff inside of the particle editor. We just have that working. And here's our right thruster. We'll go and rotate it. And it's because it's not emitting. Um, it's emitting based in the local space, so it takes the rotation to effect. Now, you'll notice we kind of have an issue here. Because it's emitting along one direction, if we rotate it like this, it's always going to be pointing down or left. So we're going to have a small problem. So we're going to need to actually fix that. So let's find our particle. And this is the particle engine. And let's duplicate this. We're going to call this particle engine right. And let's adjust that. So we basically want to flip this. So let's see. If we undo that, we have that. This is going to be, I think that's just the light. Okay, so that's the light. We don't have to worry about that. So in here is where we want to change it. And this is going to be probably the initial velocity would be my guess. Negative 200. What if we do 200? Upside down. Perfect. Uh, but it kind of... Their initial... Okay, I think we need to move that a little bit. So... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Eh, close enough. Whatever. Again, we're learning stuff. We're playing with stuff. That's the whole point. Let's change this to pixel engine right. There we go. There's our backwards pixel. Move this over. Move this down. Let's find our ship. And what do we think? Good enough? I mean, this one, the right side, unfortunately, doesn't look as good as the left. But we would have to spend an actual amount of time trying to fix it. Um, and do we want to actually fix it um i guess we could change let's see the origin let's see uh, da, da, da. uh what what was that gonna be z no oh, that's going the wrong way okay i mean here see there we go hopefully this makes everyone happy that should look a little better hopefully uh, we need to move this in and then uh select there we go better okay hopefully everyone thinks that's better we're going to consider it better and call it good enough We'll go back into our ship, and there we go. We have our little dude, and he's got some flames. Obviously, we're not, you know, a jet. Whoa, crap. What did I just do? I think I found... Oh, yeah, so the up key and the down key are both doing things which we do not want them to do. Um, and that is because our input axis here, we are not restricting it to only one direction. We're actually passing in, if it's not equal to zero, we are passing this in. So... Uh, d d d nearly equal to. So what do we want to do? How do we do? How do we prevent only one of them from going? Like before, remember we checked if it was greater than. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, you know what? Let's get rid of our nearly equal to. Let's go with a greater than 0 0.01. Oops, a greater than. Greater than, and we'll do 0 0.01, and we'll plug this into here. And then we'll flip this from a true to a false, like that. And now we should only trigger on up. There we go. I was tri When I pushed down, remember, up and down are on the axis, technically negative, and it was still applying the value. There we go. So there's our little ship floating like we wanted. Woo, look at that. Okay, cool. Particle effects are spawning, but unfortunately they're spawning all the time. First things we need to fix, they're spawning all the time. They are activated on start. So... Boom, auto-activate. Simple enough. Just like the other one, play on awake, auto-activate, one button. Second of all, how do we get these things to only fire off? Well, here's our up. If we're adding force, we probably want the particle to play. So, it's kind of where an issue comes in. We can tell the engine, the player, because... With Unity, we have one script. Everything is technically on that script. Everything's accessed from that script. And we kind of have one central place to do all of our code. And we can find everything. We can find the rigid body. We can find the thrusters. With Unreal Engine, because we keep things kind of separate, our controller is separate than the actual item we're moving. We don't have direct access unless we give direct access. Now, we can give direct access... Or we can tell the ship what to do, and then the ship could do something. So, for example, we can say, hey, activate your thruster up. And then the ship can go, okay. Or we can deactivate your thruster up. 
since we're not doing that in an well the smarter way would probably be to show the way unreal engine kind of does it so we're going to do that we're going to do it the way unreal engine shows how to do it that's what we're going to do so we're going to go into our player no reason to duplicate exactly and here's our activate thrust event um, and there's our direction input so let's grab our player right here and we should have an activate thrust function so you know what we can I'll just do this for cleanliness functions like there we go we'll call an activate thrust so whenever we have the up thrust being fired we are going to tell well down thrust bottom thruster we're going to tell our ship to activate thrust and it's going to get passed in zero so we're going to do a switch on int I could have done a select but we're going to go with a switch on int. there we go and we'll remove default and this is basically going to say hey was it a zero one or a two and do something since this is the bottom one, we're going to grab our bottom thruster. We're going to say, hey, are you currently active? So, do, do, do. is it active? Started? What's it called? I think I thought it was active, right? Activate. So, here we go. Is active. Are you currently active? If you are currently active, we're going to do something. If not, we're going to do something else. So, there we go. We'll clean this up a little bit. I usually clean up after we're done. And for now, we're just going to make stuff work. So, Someone said to activate the thrust on the bottom. Is the thrust currently on? If true, we're going to do nothing. If not, well, we're going to grab our bottom thruster and we're going to tell it to activate. Like that. Oop, uh, wait, we want false, right? Yeah, we want to make sure it's not active. Stop it. There we go. Now, I could have put a not in here as well, but we'll do that. Um, yeah, let's try that. You think that should work? Well, let's find out. Look, we got thruster. There we go. We can't shut it off, but we got it. And this thing should never fire more than once because it's going to come back through. It's going to see if it's currently active, and if it is, nothing happens. So now we need to set up a way, and we're going to do the left and right ones once we figure out the bottom one. So now we need to figure out a way to deactivate the particle effect appropriately. Now, right now, we only have this firing if it's greater than zero one so maybe off the false event this means it's basically neutral let's move this stuff up so let's try that so what if we had a deactivate thrust custom event so let's do that custom event deactivate thrust and we'll do the same thing we did before because it might work why not this should be called like thruster number or something probably instead of direction the nice thing is you can always go back and change it later we'll add a couple more pins for down left and right remove that one okay and then um we're gonna do the comp still this stuff let's see i know i'm gonna need more room so if it's currently active and they're telling me to deactivate it then we're gonna go ahead and Grab our bottom thruster and deactivate. Right? There we go. So, I mean, in theory, this should work if we call deactivate. Well, let's find out. So, let's grab our ship right here. And deactivate thrust. Bottom. And let's see what happens. We're going to go up and let go. Up, let go. Up, let go. Up, let go. Okay. I mean, I've got it. It's working. Right? And then this should simply be going through here. If it's not equal to zero, it's going to be a false. It's going to tell the ship to deactivate its thrust. It's going to go through here. It's going to see if it's currently active. If it is, it's going to deactivate it. If not, it's going to false out. Personally, I don't like this. Now, we're kind of doing this to kind of replicate the way we did it in Unity. Personally, I don't like this because we're technically pulling. Uh, po polling. We're technically talking to the ship every single frame, even though we don't need to. This is where our other input is where I'd recommend. So we're going to swap this over instead of... We're still going to keep these, activate and deactivate, but we're going to swap it out. Okay, can I find my controller? Instead of being on our input axis, we're going to move this over to our buttons. So this is going to be our... Uh, do we call it up? No, what do we call it? Bottom? What the heck did I call it? Oh my gosh, I completely forgot. 
input uh, action. Oh, bottom thruster. Okay, I named it appropriately and of course forgot. Bottom thruster. There we go. So whenever I push the bottom thruster button, and the nice thing is you can bind multiple events to the same keys. So in this case, when I hit the W key, it's going to fire. It's going to, well, um, ah, where'd it go? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, I'm, I'm in the friggin' player. Seriously, I'm in the player. I'm, I meant to be in the controller. See what happens. There we go. It was in the wrong script. So when the input access up event fires off, this event will fire as well during the same frame if that same key is pushed down. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to steal uh, this code. So we're going to grab this one. So whenever you let go of the bottom thruster, we're going to call deactivate. And of course, it's only going to call it once. And then whenever the button is pressed, we're going to call activate. So now instead of pulling every frame, it should still work, which of course, obviously, we broke something. So what do we do here? Uh, did we break something? Wait, do we not have things bound properly? Let's find out. Bottom thruster is the A. Who put A for the bottom thruster? Seriously? Whoever did that definitely needs help. And the right thruster, there we go. And Okay. So whoever did that definitely needs to be fired. Let's try that again. Well, that should have fired off. Okay, the nice thing. F9, simulate, and it's not firing off. Oh, because did I do W? What did I do? Am I, I hit S. Seriously? Okay, fourth time. I swear it's going to work this time. If it doesn't work, I don't know. There we go. Now we have thruster. <laughs> okay, only took three tries. So now you can see we have thruster, but the difference is instead of pulling every frame, button goes down, thrust is activated. Button goes off, thrust is deactivated. And we can easily replicate this for all of our other directions. And as a matter of fact, we'll do that now. So we'll do left thruster, and we'll do... Right thruster, like this, and we'll organize these a little bit better like that. We can grab these, and we'll paste them here, and we'll paste them here. As you can see, I am so into organization today. And we'll do like this and this. And the nice thing is left thruster is just our one direction, not ten, one, there we go. And this one's two for our right thruster. We can go back into our blueprint. Okay, now we have activate and deactivate. All we technically have to do is repeat this code for the left, for the other thrusters. Unfortunately, you can't kind of like pass in. Well, if we wanted to make a custom function for this, we could to clean up the code, but I'm not really too concerned about that because we could always collapse this, take in the input, find the appropriate thruster, map the thruster, different objects, to a select, blah, blah, blah. You could do lots of fancy stuff. Or, you know, we could do something like this. And copy-paste the code three times, because copy-paste is a sign of an excellent programmer. We'll do that like that. Now we want, let's see. This one should be the left thruster, so we can... Oh, it's not going to let me. That's right, dude. We can do left thruster goes into here, like this. Come on, over. Oh, it's not going to let or, and just, I only did this for cleanliness. This is, of course, something you could have done to make it easier. You can always use the same reference for two different ones like that. Either one would have worked. But that should, in theory, activate the thrust on three different ones. So if we do up, right, or left, we have it working. We don't have it working on deactivate because, you know, too lazy to copy the code. So we'll do this. We'll copy the code. Paste it twice. Slap this into here, slap this into here. We're going to nuke our thrusters like that. We're going to slap a left thruster and a right thruster. And just be lazy and copy it like that. And I mean, sure, we could clean it up if we wanted to. Ah, eh, whatever. And in theory, left and right, right, left. And you look, see, we have our thrusters working. So now when I go up, bottom, right goes right, left goes left. Granted, you should make the particles look better. It's a prototype. Boss was like, hey, you got 10 minutes to make this game. Show me how it works in Unreal Engine and Unity. We're going to be like three hours later and get it done, but whatever. Close enough. But there's our code. So there's our thrusters starting and stopping for the particle effects. 
And we were able to do it kind of more of the U Unreal Engine way than the Unity way. By instead of pulling every update, we simply take the events, which we've created, our pressed and released events, and we have it toggling on and off instead of checking every frame. But the end result is the same. We have stuff happen and stuff happen. 